What's the noticeable effect of giving cocaine to a toddler? Ten years in prison. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't have any children, but I have I have seen children. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, that'll do. Jingling <laughs> <laughs> with year nine, you are. Right? <laughs> I'm sure you were a lawyer. <laughs> My point is, I, I'm going to pose a suggestion Go. here. I suspect it's probably illegal to give drugs to children of that kind. Yep. Although. My mum says they used to give us, uh, used to feed us whiskey and brandy to shut us yep. up yeah. when we were younger. Oh, that that worked. I... <laughs> <laughs> Not now. <laughs> is there no effect? Is there less effect than on no, a grown up? No, no. So the thing is that cocaine eye drops are still in use. Cocaine eye Drop. Yes, yes, in ophthalmology, uh, specifically when testing children under the age of two, there's a condition called Aye. anisocoria, so asymmetrical pupils. And uh, I've got some here. These are <laughs> what? That's cocaine eye drop. Well, we slightly made this up. These are Sandy's cocaine. Oh God, I get drug tested from my work. I can't. Um, if we were going to put cocaine eye drops in one of our, it wouldn't be you, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> so probably, I think you were in the props room before you came on. <laughs> Cocaine is still the gold standard for infant testing because it is oh. safe, it is cheap, it's less stressful. It's a great way to dilate the pupils. Anisocoria is mostly harmless, um, but it can actually be a symptom of something. Oh. David Bowie had it, anisocoria. Yeah. Is that why he had two different coloured eyes? He wasn't born with it, he had, it was a he fight. Had a fight. He had a fight, mm. yeah, absolutely. But the very first person to use cocaine as a sort of local anaesthetic was an Austrian ophthalmologist called Karl Kohler. And he was a close friend of Sigmund Freud. They were very big on cocaine. So there's Sigmund Freud on the left and Carl Kohler on the right. He became so well known for cocaine, he was known as Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> but it was hugely popular. It was marketed for toothache. You could get cocaine lozenges. It was good for singers. It was good for their voice. It became the official remedy of the Hay Fever Association. They said that, oh, cocaine dependency is no different than tea or coffee. <gasps> yeah. So we're talking about the Victorian times. Alternative anaesthetics like chloroform and uh, ether, they were problematic in operating theatres because they were lit by gas or by candlelight or whatever. And this is the days before electric light. And the flames would interact with the chloroform to produce gases and boom, either <laughs> toxic or explosive. Yeah. Have you ever been chloroformed? <laughs> <laughs> That's your gift from this show. Isn't it? <laughs> Have you ever been chloroformed? No. So what brought on that question? <laughs> they used to do it a lot in shows, didn't they? What? That hanky moment. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's they don't it's not in the script so much because people don't have hankies anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> it's the hanky that's the problem. Yeah. The chloroform. I've got the chloroform. Now how am I going to apply it? Yes. <laughs> Chin roll, don't be absurd. <laughs> yeah, when I was a kid, every old person had a hanky up their sleeve. Yeah. You never see it these days. I always I, have a hanky I up. I always sleeve. have a hanky. Yeah, I shouldn't have said it. Yeah. <laughs>